When I have the false belief that my fear and terror is normal, how do I change that? How do I feel God's truth on the matter and make love the norm? Well, I find, I find this uh, question quite interesting because it, it actually betrays that the person doesn't understand emotion yet. Mm-hmm. So you see, if you uh, feel your fear, then it r- goes from you and then truth is automatically the norm. Yeah. So I, I feel like this person, I feel it's a woman who's asked this question, um, this lady is trying to suggest that she can do some kind of intellectual process or some kind of physical process which is going to help her make love the norm, Mm -hmm. aside from having to feel her fear. Her fear. And the real answer to this question is feel your fear. Mm -hmm. Feel it. Experience it. Right? Then truth and love become the norm. Like one doesn't come before the other. And there's almost this supposition in the question that this belief, if you like, that she will be able to make truth and love the norm and then go through fear. Yeah. That, that's trying to put the cart before the horse, actually. Mm-hmm. The only way that truth and love can become the norm is for you to go through fear first with faith yeah. that in the end you can deal with it, and then truth and love becomes the norm. Yeah. That's the only way that's ever going to happen. It doesn't matter how much you convince yourself that there's a different way. There isn't. <laughs> you must first go through the emotion of fear before truth and love can become the norm, not the other way around. Do you think she's also asking that um, it's about justifying fear and terror? Do you feel that that's what this person is asking? They're saying um, it's normal for me to have fear and terror. It's normal for me to avoid it. Uh, and that can be a justification for not dealing with it. Do you think that's what they're asking? I feel that's what she's saying, yeah. yes, certainly, yeah. that she's still not. Uh, the actual premise of the question, that's, yes. so I'm trying yes. to deal firstly here with, with the, the premise, premise of the, the question. question. Yeah. The premise of the question is basically that there's something that you can do to make truth and love the norm and then you'll go through fear. Yeah. That's the premise of the question. Yes. Well, that, that's, that's incorrect. Yeah. That's no, the presumption is incorrect. Mm-hmm. You will not make truth and love the norm unless you go through fear. You have to go through fear first. Mm-hmm. Fear is, your own, of, is a creation of humanity and it must be released before truth and love can become the norm. So the general premise of the question is already false. Mm. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Now let's look at her question. Yes. And the, and the question she's asking is, is there something I can do to... Feel God's truth on the matter and make love the norm. Feel, in other words, feel God's truth about fear and make love the norm. No, there's not. Yeah. Other than going through your fear. No, there's not. I know you want there to be. Mm. Mm. I know you desperately desire that there's some kind of magic wand or magic th- trick or magic <laughs> thought that you're technique. going to be able to have, some kind of magical technique that goes, ah, um, now that you've uh, done this magical thing, you'll go through fear. Yeah. No. You need to go through fear before you'll understand how to go through it. Mm -hmm. It's the same with pretty much everything in your life, actually. You need, before you can actually love, you have to go through the feeling of love. You need to feel love and go through the experience of love before you'll understand it. Mm -hmm. To understand your fear, you're going to need to go through your fear. So stop telling yourself that there's another way. (laughs) And the premise of this question is there is a desire for there to be another way, way. a different way. There's a desire that there's some kind of magical solution that will allow her to go through the emotion of fear and to start to see that there's a reason for going through it. Mm. But surely there's enough evidence, even if we examine our life when we're living in fear and terror, Mm -hmm. we can say, oh, this is a normal state of being that everyone's in. But if we really examine our life and become sensitive to how dissatisfied, limited, how much pain we're in, surely we can begin to see that there's evidence that it doesn't matter if everyone's in this state, it can't be normal from God's perspective because it's full of pain Correct. and dissatisfaction. Yeah. So even within that, it's not a technique, but you could just um, examine the yes, results of living in fear and terror. Yes, and this brings up the operation of truth, mm-hmm. right? 
even if you start to tell yourself an intellectual truth, which is possible. Yeah. So as a part of this question, you could start telling yourself intellectual truths. For example, an intellectual truth might be, I believe, intellectually of course, mm -hmm. that once I go through fear, I'll live, be very happy. Mm -hmm. But it's only an intellectual thought at this point. I believe that God wants me to go through fear. That's only an intellectual thought. Mm -hmm. I believe that when I go through fear, I'll have all these benefits. That's only an intellectual thought. I believe that because we, we have all these problems on earth because of fear, that's only an intellectual thought. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Until you actually go through the experience of your own fear, you will not believe any of those things. Mm. You will not. So something has to happen inside of you to decide to go through your fear. And that's your will yes. needs to be engaged. And if there's only, if there is any magical solution, <laughs> there's only one, and that is use your will to go through your fear. Yeah. Now, most people who are asking this kind of questions have already decided to not use their will to go through their fear. Mm -hmm. And they've, they're actively using their will to deny, shut down, avoid their fear. And they're in heavy addiction to avoid their fear, right? And then they say, please give me a magical pill that will help me deal with fear because I know my fear is influencing my relationship with God. And the question I'm asking is, if you know your fear is influencing your relationship with God and actually stopping it, surely that should be enough motivation to go through the emotion of fear. And if it's not a mo enough motivation, then perhaps you need to study more about God's, God's nature and all those kind mm -hmm. of things to help you come to at least some intellectual awareness. But at some point, even after you've done all of that, you still may not go through your fear. Because going through your fear requires that you actually emotionally engage your will so that you want to go through your fear. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's all it requires, yeah. to emotionally engage your will to do so. Now, to do that, we've got to look at all the reasons why we don't want to engage our will to do so. And sure, that means feeling all of our false beliefs. So whatever false beliefs we have about fear need to be felt. Mm -hmm. right? There's nothing we can do to absorb the truth about them until they're felt. The truth and the error cannot exist on the same subject in the soul at the same time. Right? This is one of the major points about how the human soul functions. So, so while the fear inside of me exists about dealing with my fear, the truth about dealing with my fear cannot enter me. Yeah. And I'll be looking for all the excuses under the sun to avoid my fear. Yes. When I start feeling my own avoidance of my fear, mm -hmm. feeling about whether it's actually wise, feeling about all the, all the, all the reasons why I believe I should be able to avoid my fear, once I start feeling all of those things, now more and more of my addictions will release about my fear. Yep. And then I'll, be in, I'll end up with no addictions about my fear. Yep. But it still doesn't mean I'll go through my fear. Mm -hmm. Because unless I want to use my will to go through my fear, I won't. Mm. I just won't. So at some point, I'm going to have to develop my will enough to go through my fear, to actually experience it, to go through it emotionally. Now, I believe that a relationship with God is worth it. And I believe a relationship with my soulmate is worth it. And if those two things are not worth it enough for you, I don't know what's going to make it worth it. Yeah. <laughs> you have to ponder about that and think about that. What is going to make it worth it for you mm -hmm. to go through your fear? And do you want the results of what you're currently doing? Whenever you deny your fear, you've got pain, suffering, you've got physical pain, suffering, these are all happening all the time to you right now. Do you want to keep going through these things or do you want to work through your fear? What is it? Yeah. At some point, you're going to have to make a choice to actually feel it, emotionally make a choice to feel it. Mm -hmm. And that requires a switch to occur inside of you where you no longer justify it, you no longer say it's normal, you no longer say, oh, the whole world's in it, so I should be in it too. You no longer do it because the, everyone in the world wants you to stay there. You no longer do it because you're afraid of what the world will think of you doing it. And you no longer, you know, that re requires releasing all those different emotions, because they're all emotions yeah. that cause your beliefs from you, 
and then you'll get to the point where, yeah, I want to go through my fear. I think it's fantastic going mm. through my fear. And then you'll go through your fear. And you'll be surprised that it won't take very long. <laughs> you know, it's the big build-up that takes a little long time. All the destruction of all of the false beliefs surrounding it, that, that's what takes the long time. Yeah. By the time you get to going through it, you, you, usually most people breeze through it in a few months at the most. And a few months out of a year, you know, out of 70, 80 years of your life, hardly anything. Yeah. And the difference it's going to make to your entire life, completely different. It's going to change life overnight yeah. if you let yourself feel it. So, so I'd, I'd go for it if I was you, but, you know, there's not much I can do to convince you other than telling you the truth. Yeah. Because the truth is the anecdote to fear. Antidote, but it's yeah. Antidote to fear. But it's only if you feel the truth mm -hmm. that it's the antidote yeah. to fear. Yeah. You've got to feel the truth. And a lot of times we're already feeling the fear about all the subjects and so we don't feel the truth on them. So we're going to have to feel the fear, actually process the fear on those subjects. Yeah. Go through them. Yeah. Look at all your false beliefs about fear. Mm -hmm. Feel them. Mm -hmm. Then you'll get somewhere with your fear. Yeah. But I, I, I don't enjoy the premise of the discussion because it basically is saying that it's possible to actually fake a position of truth without going through fear, and you can't. You can't do it. You can't do that. You can fake it, but you won't go through it. You, nothing will change in your life. Mm -hmm. you, you'll attract the same things. Yep. Nothing will really change. Mm -hmm. Unless you've got some spirit assistance for it to change, nothing will change. Like, and I say, you know, the true change is you changing your soul. Then you don't need any help to change your life. Your soul changes your entire life. Your attractions change, everything changes. That's real, that's real progress. Mm -hmm. Having someone help you doesn't, doesn't change that. 